Hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we are continuing our study in the book of Psalms. We are on Psalms 109. Psalms 109, and this is a psalm that was written by David. <clears throat> and it is a petition to the Lord because David is very mad in this uh, in this psalm. And he, he's really praying something <clears throat> against his adversaries, those people that have been very wicked toward him. He's, uh, he's petitioning God because of them and uh, asking for God to basically come in with his right hand, his right hand of judgment and come in with it harsh upon them is what he's praying. So again, this is a psalm by David. We're in Psalm 109. And it begins with, Hold not thy peace, O God, of, of my praise. And again, this is a petition to God. It's a, like a prayer against the wicked people that have been bothering David. He said, For the mouth of the wicked is, and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Now, we can also, as we, you know, discuss throughout the whole Bible study of the book of Psalms and Proverbs, and as we go throughout the whole Bible, if you convert it into the kingdom of God, it belongs to you. You know, everything in the Bible, it's it's you, it belongs to you, and it, it, it all the words of it, it's yours, you know, because you're a part of it. The Holy Spirit is yours, it's in you, So and the word of God is in you, and it's a part of the Holy Spirit. And so... Uh, they, there may be times when you may be dealing with some of the same circumstances that some of the individuals in the Bible has dealt with. Just like David is dealing with a very crooked, deceitful, rotten adversary. And he's he's asking, he's petitioning God about this. And asking God to do something, you know, because God tells us, um, well, that is in the New Testament to love our enemies. Christ tells us, and of course, you know, not that David is not loving this individual, because he hasn't did anything to him because had he done anything to him obviously he wouldn't still be doing it right and he wouldn't have any reason to petition God because he would have vindicated himself but he doesn't do he doesn't do that and he's petitioning God about it and we can do the same thing okay so then David goes on to say uh, he has a lying tongue he's lying up lying on him they can pass me about also the words of hatred uh, oh, they could pass me about with words of hatred. Sorry about that. And fought against me without a cause. Okay, so they don't even have a reason to be mad at David. He's done nothing to them, but they just uh, you just have a problem with him. Because again, David is anointed. And then, you know, the kingdom of darkness always has a problem with the kingdom of light. You don't have to be doing anything to, to the person. You just have to show up and have that anointing on you. And if that's a person from the kingdom hell they might they might have a problem with you because you came to disrupt with your holy spirit and don't even know that you came to disrupt okay <laughs> not even aware of that's what god is using you for because he hasn't you know told you anything to do differently but the the anointing is going to work for itself in the earth god is going to get his glory in the earth through whomever he puts to his anointing in whatever vessel you know um because it's his, it's him, it's his anointing. It's not ours. It's his. So then, uh, so he says, "For my love, there are my adversaries, but I give myself to prayer." And he's been, he's been lovable toward them and praying for them, and um, you know, petitioning God on their behalf. And he says, "And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love." Now, you know, we can all, of course, attest to experiences like that. And uh, this is what his experience is like right now. And he's asking God, he says, Set a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg, and let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he has, and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, and neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. So let his posterity be cut off, and 
the generation following and their name let them be blotted out let them you know they're they're to, they're to have no relevance he's saying let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out and let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth I mean this is a David has really been through with these people for him to actually you know come and petition God in this particular way so you could just imagine you know what he may have been going through because even with some of the experiences that he had you know with Saul you know and that's one of the main experiences that I use a lot because he even wrote psalms about that he even wrote prayers and petitions to God in the book of Psalms regarding that experience he was having with Saul and how Saul and Saul was an anointed person of God he you know you would have thought he would have known better you know but he didn't and uh, even today you think that about certain people but it's just not the way it is so anyway as he is he's prayed this he's asked God to let these things happen to this person so as we go into verse 16, it gives you the reason why, okay? The why, the reason why David feels like this is what this person should experience because of what they've done and doing to me and to mine. He says, verse 16, because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. And as he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. Okay, so obviously this person isn't just, you know, getting to David. He's no doubt a, a problem to other people too, you know, because he's persecuted. He's a persecutor, okay? So then he says, as he has clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels, like water and like oil into his bones. So let it be unto him as a garment. Which covers him and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually so let cursing be something that he walks in let him instead of a blessing you know he's saying because that's what he is giving out you know he's cursing David so David is saying to God let him have what he's giving to me let him have that and many times in the Bible we have read many different instances where many different people have, have, have asked that to God and then God has even stated that that is what he does. So it's not something that they're asking that is not of God, okay? Because God actually says that, and we're going to go into that uh, when we get done. That's what we're going to talk about with this psalm. And then it goes on to say that, uh, he said, uh, let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. But do not uh, do this for me, he's saying, oh God, the Lord. For thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like a shadow. When it declines, I am tossed, and, tossed up and down as a locust. Okay, so he is really sad about whatever it is, this person. Because, you know, sometimes people can lie on you and say different things. And make people think a certain way about you and not even be the way that it is, you know, that you are or whatever. But because... They have an influence over people, or, you know, a certain group of people. They can influence them, and if they don't have any discernment, you know, that's out the door. So therefore, they can convince them that you know by saying deceitful things about you, and that's what's probably happening here with David. And uh, he's asking God to come in, do something, change this. And so, verse twenty-four says, "My knees are weak through fasting; my flesh fails of fatness." And I became a reproach unto them. When they locked, when they looked upon me, they shut their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, and save me according to thy mercy, that they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, O Lord, hast done it. So let them curse, but bless, but bless me. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Let my adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them be covered let them cover themselves with their own confusion like a mantle okay and then I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth yes I will praise him among the multitude for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul oh hallelujah judging his soul hallelujah thank you holy God of heaven 
So, you know, the verses that we're going to talk about is, uh, I'm going to start with uh, verse 16. Because they remember not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart, okay? This is what the adversary, these people that are against David has uh, they've done. And so God, so since David is petitioning God, this is the reason why. Then he goes on to say, as he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delights not in blessing, so let it be far from him. Okay? Because, you know, he's cursing David. He's judging David. He's condemning David. He's being deceitful, lying against David. So David is saying, let him have that as his food to eat also. And uh, some may say that this is, you know, that's not a good thing to ask of the Lord. But then he said, if we go over to, uh, I'm led to this over in Matthew chapter 7 in the New Testament in the Gospels where Jesus is speaking regarding judgment. Because that's basically what the person is doing. When they start talking against somebody and making a judgment against them, you know, he's judging his character saying things against him like he's a, a god. So then uh, Matthew chapter 7 starts off verse 1. We're going to go all the way to 12. He says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So right there, that's what David is asking of the Lord. He said, as he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. Okay? Because that's what he's dishing out. Let him have that back for himself so that he can see how that is also. You know, because sometimes when you get a chance to experience what you're dishing out and it's not so good, you learn not to dish it out. You know, and so um, that's what David is saying here. And then here, right here, he says, going on to verse 3. And we're back over to uh, Matthew chapter 7. It's verse 3. It says, And why beholds thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considers not the beam that's in your own eye? So, O oh, how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of your eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye. For you hypocrite, first cast the beam out your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly the, you know, the mote that is. Now, he didn't say you had a beam. He said a mote out your, out your own eye, out your brother's eye. Okay, you know, and so I think that now this is my own personal experience too. Like the closer you, the more you pray unto the Holy God, and the more you pray for people, the more you begin to look more at yourself, and uh, kind of like judge yourself more than other people, because I because you have the Holy Spirit, and it's you know more that's what's really doing it. So, uh, anyway, that just came out. So, going back to verse 5, he said, he called him a hypocrite. So then, verse 6 says, Give not that which is holy to dogs, neither cast the pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet, and turn again and tear you up. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So now, you know, Jesus Christ is just dropping different little nuggets here out, you know, along just dropping different nuggets about different things he goes into different because first he's saying give not that which is holy to dogs and that's uh enemies don't give anything you know that is holy of god to someone outside the kingdom basically and then he goes into saying ask and it shall be given and you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you then verse 8 says for everyone that asks receives and everyone that seeks finds and him to and to him that knocks it shall be open. For what man is there among you that if his son asks for bread, you'll give him a stone? Or if they ask for fish, you'll give him a serpent? So if you then, being evil people, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So therefore, verse 12 is the verse that we want to key in on. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, 
do even to them, for this is the law and the, and this is the prophets. The law and the prophets. Okay, so that belongs to the prophets, basically. That's how God arranged everything in the earth, basically, you know. And we hear it so many times. So, so there's four. And he just makes it, he just makes the statement so that, you know, people can be more aware to look out for it and just be, uh, be a little bit more considerate to others when you do get ready to start talking about them, I guess, and maybe thinking you can judge them for whatever reason you think you can judge them for. And so nevertheless, though, but that's the verse we want to just, you know, just talk about because a lot of people think that, yeah, God, you know, Jesus Christ tells us to walk in love toward our enemies, meaning, uh, you know, let's, you know, we do that. But however, he has already established in his word what's going to happen to those people that are your adversaries, because not only are they adversaries to you, they are adversaries to God. Okay. And that is if you're walking in his will, if you're doing what he has directed you to do, if you're walking in your true destiny, you're walking in the will of God and you have adversaries all around you. Don't even worry about that because the Holy Spirit, Holy God of heaven, he's on it. He is on it, no diggity doubt. And I mean, they may be doing whatever they're doing, saying whatever they're saying, but there is a day of vengeance. There is a day of recompense. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. And I lift up anybody who comes on this video and they are having this type of experience where the adversary is surrounding them with satanic spirits. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, through Heavenly Father, we ask you to pour out more of your anointing down upon them and break every yoke of bondage right now, Holy God, in the name of Christ. Amen. And we thank you for the victory, Holy God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, and I will see you again as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible study video channel.